and ultimately he wasn't paying their credit card debt. He was actually paying for his own nightclub in Brighton Beach. And uh, the lease on two very sweet Mercedes. And also, ironically, he was paying his own mother's credit card debts, but not his customers. So he now, uh, we joined with the U.S. Attorney in New York, and he now has criminal charges from the U.S. Attorney and civil charges from us. So he had a very bad week last week. And uh, I think hopefully it sent a message. So that's the agency as a whole. And then the law specifically wrote that this new agency should have an office for all of you, the Office of Service Member Affairs, and that's the one that I head up. It serves active duty guard and reserve and their families. And I'm supposed to be doing three things. Um, I'm supposed to see that you get the financial education you need to make better informed consumer decisions. I've seen too many soldiers sign really horrible contracts. Um, I saw one recently where uh, the young service member is going to be paying $3,600 for an iPad because the monthly payment looked good, but they never looked at what's the total cost. Um, I've seen laptops, contracts for laptops that cost about $3,500 by the time all is said and done. The worst one I saw was um, actually an Army E6. He signed what's called an auto title loan. That's where you give somebody the title to your car as security and they give you a loan. So it's a very low risk loan to them. They can always come take the car if you don't pay. But he was borrowing $1,600. It was a 32 month loan. And his monthly payment was $580. Yeah, do the math. Um, it was a 400% interest rate. And on that uh, $1,600 loan, by the time the contract, which was legal by the way, is done, he will have paid $15,000 in finance charges. I know you're all looking like, I would never do that, and I'm sure most of you wouldn't, but um, right now financial problems are the number one reason why people lose their security clearances. And um, there's a reason for that. If you are in a real financial bind, sometimes you're open to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do. And I suspect that staff sergeant was in a real bind and needed that $1,600 that day and was just willing to sign whatever it took to get it. So um, anyway, part of my job is to see that folks get the education at least to um, hopefully make some better informed decisions. And I decided uh, I would begin at the beginning on the education piece, so I went and watched the financial education class at basic training at Fort Jackson, um, as well as the Navy one at Great Lakes and the Marine Corps one at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot. I have to tell all of you that the Marine students periodically shout, kill, during the class, which is a little different. Um, the Army one, they all had their weapons under their seats, so that was a little alarming as well. But, uh, <laughs> so what I want to know is how many of you actually remember the financial class that you had at basic training? Uh, all right, we got one good student, <coughs> yes. Well, as you see, most of you don't remember it, do you? You're looking at me like, what? Um, what happens is, you know, you're tired, you're scared, you're stressed, you're being run around, you're being yelled at by the drill sergeant, and uh, if I put you down in a comfortable seat and I put up a PowerPoint deck, what happens? Sleep. Sleep. So the message is just not being received. And the same thing kind of happens at AIT. So we thought, well, maybe we can help by doing a little education piece that uh, can be delivered when somebody's in delayed entry, when they've committed to join but they haven't gone to boot camp yet. So we're going to try that. We talked to the senior enlisted um, advisors to the military, and uh, we're trying to do kind of a little just enough, just in time um, education piece that folks can take before they get to basic training and get all freaked out by the drill sergeant. So we'll let you know how that goes. Um, one thing I want to have in there, and I want all of you to know, how many of you um, had student loan debt when you entered the military? Okay, I see a number of hands. Um, if you join the military and go on to active duty with debt, credit card debt, student loan debt, um, mortgage debt, you actually have something called the Service Member Civil Relief Act that covers that. You can write to your lender with a copy of your orders and say, I want you to reduce my interest rate to 6% while I'm on active duty. And they have to do that. So I want you to know that if you enter the military with student loans. Also, um, some people are being told by their lenders, oh, don't worry, you want an active duty, you can just defer that loan. Um, don't pay at all while you're on active duty, you don't need to. That's a really bad idea. 
unless it's a federal subsidized loan, it's going to keep earning interest, accruing interest the whole time you're not paying. So when you get out, you're going to have a nasty surprise, a much bigger bill than you came in with. So there's some stuff we want you to know um, when you enter the military with debt that we're hoping we can put in that education piece. Okay, the second thing I do is I monitor your complaints to us. We do take complaints about consumer financial products and services, um, mortgages, credit cards, uh, private student loans, credit reporting agencies. Did this just die? Oh, we're working again, sort of. Okay, anyway, um, we've got about 5,000 military complaints so far. And um, we've gotten back about half a million dollars for the folks who came to us. That's not to say that everybody who comes to us with a complaint is going to get money back. They won't. But uh, what we do if we get a complaint from you at our website, consumerfinance.gov, please remember that, is um, we will send a letter on our federal, federal letterhead to the company and say, hello, we got a complaint about you. Please respond in 15 days. And uh, they do pay attention when they get a letter from the feds, so they do respond. We've had a lot of people um, who didn't even want money back. They just said, I could not get anybody at the company to call me back. Or I got somebody different every single time who kept asking me to send my information again and again. So we've had a lot of good luck in just getting somebody from the company to call the person and fix the problem. So um, we can help you when you file complaints, but you're also helping us. Because if we see a pattern of the same company, get, you know, we get complaints again and again about the same thing, then we can send that over to our enforcement division and say, here's something you might want to look at. And I will tell you, probably by the end of this month, we are going to have an announcement of an enforcement action that does have a military connection to it. I can't give you more details than that because it's still confidential right now. But it was triggered by some of the complaints that came into us. So please, consumerfinance.gov, uh, remember that website. <coughs> and file a complaint if you have an issue with the consumer financial product or service. Okay, the last thing that I do is um, I'm supposed to coordinate with other federal and state agencies on consumer protection measures for all of you. Obviously, that's partly DOD, but it's, it's a lot of other agencies as well. How many of you out there own a home? Okay, we got a few out there, very entrepreneurial of you. Um, I found when I was going around to military installations, especially the first year, I found a lot of military who owned homes and had seen the value of that home go underwater. So they ended up owning a home that was worth less than what they owed on it. There were some federal programs out there, but um, they had some provisions that made it really hard for military to use to access them. Um, the Treasury Department, for example, and uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac all said, in order to get their help, you needed to be behind on your payments. Well, do you all want to be behind on your payments? No, because then you worry about your clearance. So I went and talked to those folks and said, you have to understand the military, that's not something that works for them. So they changed their policy and said, okay, if a service member gets PCS orders, we'll consider that they're qualified for our assistance programs, whether they're delinquent or not. And then we talked to them about um, the fact of, you know, a PCS move, the fact you can't stay in the house, you can't occupy the house, which they used to require. I told them I myself moved 24 times in 37 years. You know, you just, I've never lived in a house more than four years in my life. So they changed that requirement as well and said they would consider it only occupied if you plan to go back and you don't buy another house someplace else. But the real big deal that they did was, um, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, that's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, it's about 60% of U.S. mortgages, came to us and said, uh, we want to make an announcement. If a service member on PCS orders has to do a short sale, that means you have to sell the house short of what you owe on it, we will forgive the difference. That's a big deal. And that went into effect November 1st. So if you know anybody who's in that situation and needs to make a short sale, um, you want to let them know about that. So that's an example of what I can do with the feds, you know, telling them what your life is like and what works and what doesn't. I do testify in front of Congress. Um, I've been called five times since I started this job, which is not exactly a, a fun experience, but they do ask me, what are the issues? So I partly come out here to tell you about what I'm doing, but I also want you to tell me what the issues are for you so I can take those back to Congress and tell them the right answer. 
And uh, I do work for the states as well. I've talked to the Attorney General in almost every state. 17 of them went with me to military installations um, to sit up at a town hall so that the folks stationed in that state knew that they were there for them. And they've done some great stuff. Um, the Kentucky AG went after a company that was like a marketing firm for for-profit colleges. They had a website called GIBill.com that looked like it was an official VA site. It wasn't. So he sued them and shut them down and got them to give that URL to the VA. Uh, the Tennessee Attorney General went after a company called SmartBuy that was selling computers uh, and electronics. There's a little rule of thumb for all of you. If they call themselves something like that, SmartBuy, it's probably not. In this case, it wasn't. The, the computers were, again, over $3,000 a piece. Um, it should have cost $1,000. So he shut them down, and he was cutting checks back to soldiers at Fort Campbell um, when I saw him down there. And he wasn't just, um, you know, kind of putting up a notice. He was literally, he and his staff were tracking down every single soldier that was owed money and were getting it back to them. So there's a lot we can do for you, but um, part of it is that we need to hear from you what your issues are. So I'm going to stop talking now about what I do, and hopefully we'll get some questions from this crowd. So um, feel free to raise your hand, be brave, and uh, ask, me, ask me a question. If not, I'll just keep talking or I might even call on you, so look out. Yes, there's a soldier in the back there. Yeah, I had a, my truck was repossessed uh, before I went into active duty, and I have a, it's a credit accept, acceptance corporation. I can't contact them anymore. They've already turned it into an, another finance agency or whatever. And I'm, I'm trying to get that squared away, but I don't really know how. And they will not contact me after they found out I was active duty. Hmm. Um, and you said this happened before you rendered active duty? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that makes it a little harder because you don't have the Service Member Civil Relief Act. But um, did they... Um, were they out to buy your pay here where they wrote you the, wrote you the loan themselves? Uh, Do you know? I'm not sure. Try, file a complaint with us um, at consumerfinance.gov um, and we'll you know, see what we might be able to do. Um, once, we, once you get a complaint number from, assigned to you by us, then email us at military at cfpb.gov. That's like our initials, military at cfpb.gov. Give us your complaint number and we'll see what we can do. Hopefully that helps. Another hand in the very back. Uh, if my wife is uh, if my wife is using a uh, a lease on an uh, office space, would my PCS orders also apply to be able to break that lease uh, early? Is it just in her name? Uh, yes, ma'am. Then no. Um, the Service Member Civil Relief Act protections. Your name has got to be on there in order to receive um, receive that. You're right, though. If you do have the um, the Service Member Civil Relief Act does allow you as a military member to break the lease on an apartment or a, also a cell phone uh, contract or a car lease when you get PCS orders. But if it's just your name on the property, then no. Okay. Unfortunately not. Okay, what else? Yes. Thank you. 
research division at CFPB um, that knows a lot about the auto market. So uh, we could possibly give you some, we can't give you legal advice, but we can you know, possibly help you out. So my deputy Dave is there, he can use card, email him, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you.
addition, there are some universities out there, especially for the soldiers that are going to be heading back home to the states that maybe they should pay attention to. And again, it's a buyer beware. In this case, it would be some of the universities don't have your education as the, that you're at their best interest of their heart. They're really after your GI Bill money. Do you uh, comment on that? Sure. Um, how many of you out there are planning to take some college classes while you're on packing duty? That would be lots of you, pretty much everybody. That's a great thing, you know, I, I applaud that. Um, but there is a challenge right now. There's part of the colleges are what are called for profit colleges. That means they're running a business model, they're selling you, the customer, a product, which is the course that you take. And uh, they then, their revenues, you know, they can decide how they spend those. Um, the military is very attractive to those schools for a particular reason. There's something called the Higher Education Act, and uh, it says that a for-profit school can only get 90% of its money from federal education funds. The, the other 10% has to come somewhere else. And the reasoning behind that was no school should exist just to live off of federal money. They should have a product that's good enough that you're willing to pay for it through other means. The problem is when that law was written, they defined federal education funds as Title IV, and your TA and GI Bill are not Title IV. So that puts your military money squarely in that 10% that those schools have to get. So they have been chasing after the military really hard. If you look at Army Times, you'll see ads in there every month uh, from a number of these schools. Some of them um, you know, have been around a while, and they will give you good education at a fair price. There are others, frankly, that will not. Um, they really just have seen a cash cow. They see all of you as dollar signs in uniform, and they want to sign you up. And uh, they're doing very well at it. They have, I think, well over half of the GI Bill and TA money is going to the for-profit schools now. The question you have to ask yourself is, um, you know, what is this school going to do for me? I wrote a couple questions down when I gave a talk, um, and some of them are, ask them what's their graduation rate? How many people actually start there and get a degree? Um, as, a, as a whole, I think the for-profit colleges is less than half. Um, ask them how many of their students, well, first of all, ask them how much it's going to cost, and are your military benefits going to cover all of it? And if it doesn't, um, you know, how, how are you going to pay for the rest? If they're encouraging you to take out private student loans to cover the rest, that's probably the worst possible option. You have almost no protections with private student loans. Um, and you can't get rid of them even if you declare bankruptcy, by the way, any student loan. So you want to go to federal student loans if you need to, if they cost more than your GI Bill or TA. Um, ask them about their accreditation. There's a couple kinds of accreditation. There's nationally accredited <coughs> schools and regionally accredited schools. Which one would you think would be better? It's not national, it's regional. Um, in many cases, your credits will not transfer um, from a nationally accredited school to that regionally accredited school back home that you decide to go to when you get out. So the credits that you took and spent money on while you're in uniform, and if they were at a nationally accredited school, you may not be able to transfer almost any of them to the school you decide to go to when you get out. Um, that's a question you want to be asking before you start there. There are also issues with employment. Um, the Attorney General of Illinois actually sued Westwood College. They were offering a criminal justice degree and saying, you know, take our criminal justice degree and become a Chicago or an Illinois state trooper or, or a Chicago city policeman. The problem was they were nationally accredited and the Chicago city police and the Illinois state police would not even look at their graduates. So she sued them for basically, you know, false promises, which they were, that these folks could find a job. They couldn't, not from that program. And yet, you know, um, they spent their money there and then didn't get what they thought they were going to get from it. Um, you also, yeah, I want you all to shop around. Don't just go to a school because you know a lot of your buddies go there and they say they're military friendly and they may love the military. Yeah, they may, they love your money, but um, that doesn't mean that they're giving you the degree that you need. The president is interested in this. He actually signed an executive order last April at Fort Stewart, um, Georgia, saying, DOD, VA, Department of Ed, you all work together to fix this. Get it so somebody can actually compare colleges, see what they're going to cost, um, and has a place to go to do that and to complain. So um, VA and Department of Ed are working together. They've got a pretty good um, student shopping sheet now where you can do some compare comparisons. We have some stuff on our website as well. Um, when you think about it, going to college is one of the biggest purchases you will ever make in your life. And I really don't want you to spend all your benefits and end up with a degree that nobody is interested in.
invested in. And I, I did a round table in uh, Illinois with Senator Durbin, and um, there was, I met a vet there. She had used the, the Montgomery GI Bill, but she had spent, uh, she'd gone to a four-year school, a for-profit, couldn't find anybody to even give her a job interview with that degree, allowed herself to be persuaded by the same school that what she really needed was a master's from them, did that, same result, no interest, no job interviews, no nothing. Um, and when I met her, she was still in the same low paying job she got when she got out, and she was $100,000 in debt with student loans. So, you know, those are bad stories, and I don't want it to happen to any of you. So, it's on you to shop around. People ask us if we have a good list or a bad list. We don't. Um, our agency doesn't do that. But I want you to think, think really hard about where you want to go with some folks are just looking for what they can do online to get some promotion points. But is it a school where those credits are going to transfer for you and actually get you down the road toward that degree? So thanks for asking that question. Okay, anything else out there? What other questions we got? Let me talk about um, loans a little bit. Not student loans, just regular loans. Um, you all don't get paid a whole lot of money. I hate that. Many of you might have found yourself in a position where you felt like you needed a loan. Um, if it's an emergency, I hope the first place you went was on the post to see you know, if you could get help from Army Emergency Relief. But um, if you turn to the internet and look for loans there, you are going to usually be finding a whole lot of trouble. If you Google military loans, you'll get uh, 51 million hits that come up. A lot of them have military names, just military this, U.S. military that. Um, but many of the interest rates range from 40 to 400 percent for those loans online. Um, I know the tendency is you don't want to go tell anybody that you need a loan because you don't want to get in trouble, right? So you think you'll just do it yourself in the privacy of your own home. Um, but you're either going to get an expensive loan, or in some cases it's an outright scam. If you um, they say, yes, we're going to lend you money, and uh, your credit's not great. We'll give you a good interest rate, but you do have to do a down payment because your credit's not good. Or you have to do an, pay an insurance policy. Or you have to send in a premium. They'll call it different things. But the bottom line, it ends up with you sending money off to somebody you don't know in advance to get a loan. That's illegal for them to ask you to do that. Plus, um, what do you think happens once you send that money off? You just sent a gift to somebody. It also works with cars um, if you go shopping for cars online. How many of you have uh, shopped for a car online, looked around for that perfect car? Okay, not too many fessing up. I know there's more of you out there. Um, people just, uh, that's, there's a lot of scams on there. And I'm not saying it's all, you know, young people that get caught up in this. I knew um, a colonel at McDill Air Force Base who was looking for a car for his son for college, kind of really perfect car, just what they wanted, the price seemed fair, they even said it could be shipped immediately, just wired the money. Um, he, at the last minute, just decided, you know, I'm going to call the shipping company. And he called them up, they said, we have a six-month waiting list and we don't know who this person is. It was a scam. Uh, basically, that person had lifted the description of a car that was legitimately for sale somewhere and just put it on their own site, started selling it. And, uh, one thing you can do is Google the vehicle ID number. And if you see that it's been sold like six times in the last six months, hello, that's a, that's a red flag for you. So again, the bottom line with all of these is it involves you sending money to somebody you don't know in advance for something you think they're going to send you. And usually the answer is um, they won't send it to you. You just send them a gift. So um, please keep that in mind. Okay. Um, Questions and inspiring thoughts out there? Uh, a little bit more about scams. How many of you are married? Okay, lots of folks. That's not a scam. <laughs> Sorry. That's an unfortunate association of words there. Um, how many of you have a spouse that is looking for a job or maybe looking for a job when you go back to the States? Okay. Um, you got to be careful of job search sites. A lot of them are like a happy hunting ground for scammers. If you think about it, what do you put on a job search site? You put your resume. You put your personal information on there, right? 
So if I am a scammer, all I have to do is read your resume and then I call you up and I say, I think we have a job for you, uh, but we do need to do a background check. So please, you'll have to, and you, you will have to pay for that. So just send us $75 for the background check and uh, then we'll move forward. Hello, what have you just done? Is that money to somebody you don't know? Um, yeah, and you know, or they may even call and say you're hired. We just need your information for our payroll office. Well, then you give them your bank account number, and that's that ends in a very ugly way. So, um, something just to be cautious about. And I will talk about one more thing, which is um, your credit score and credit reports. How many of you? Tell me what is the name of the website where you can go and get a free copy of your credit report once a year. <laughs> said freecreditreport.com needs to go out and do push-ups. <laughs> freecreditreport.com is not free. That one will charge you money. Annualcreditreport.com. Stand up and say that again for them. There you go. That's the one. from each of the big three credit reporting agencies, that's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, once a year at annualcreditreport.com. If you want to, you can go once every four months and just do one at a time, so you can actually check like three times a year. Um, it's really important for a couple reasons. First of all, if you have a common name like Turner, Nelson, Smith, Jones, Rodriguez, Gonzalez, Johnson, black, white, you may find somebody else's information all over your credit report. Um, that other person may not be very good with their finances. And uh, you will then find you have a lousy credit score, not because you did something bad, but because somebody's stuff is all over your account. And I'll tell you another story from McDill. Um, this couple told me I could tell. It was a two-star general there, General Jones. Uh, he went to buy a house in Tampa for the retirement house, and uh, when they went in to talk to the bank, they said, well, General Jones, happy to write your mortgage, but if your wife is on there, we can't do it. And they were shocked. His wife, Patricia Jones, had always paid her bills and done everything right, um, but she had never looked at her credit report, like you're all going to do when you leave here today. And she found that there was another Patricia Jones out there whose bad stuff was all over her credit report. Consequently, she had a horrible credit score, and the bank didn't want to put her on the mortgage. Now, you can fix it. If there's stuff on there that really isn't you, what you need to do, and you'll see on the website how to do it, is to you know, file a notice with them. Hello, there's stuff on here. This is not me. And you can gradually, you, know, you can work with them to get that off of there. If your credit report is bad because you just made some financial mistakes in the past, you didn't pay your bills, you had a default, um, you can't pay somebody to fix that. And there are folks who will be out there telling you that they can fix it for you for a fee. They can't. All they can do is do what I just told you. They can find mistakes, but they can't fix the bad stuff. What will fix the bad stuff is time. Um, it takes about seven years for it to go away completely. But the good news is each year it weighs less and less and less. So, um, <coughs> You know, your credit score, it really impacts everything you do. It's going to make you pay a bigger deposit on an apartment. It's going to charge you a higher rate of interest. Um, there's so many reasons that a bad credit score is going to hurt you. And again, it could also cause you to lose your clearance. So um, I want you all to be aware of that, to leave here today, check your credit report, and just realize how important that is at this point in your lives. That, uh, um, and I'll ask one more question. How many of you out there pay most of your day-to-day -day stuff with a debit card? <coughs> okay. Um, how many are more apt to use a credit card? Show of hands. Okay, not very many. The problem with using a debit card for everything is it doesn't build your credit score at all. You're basically just taking the money from yourself to pay that, um, and it doesn't show up on your credit report. So if you have um, a thin credit file, that means there's not much in there. That also is going to mean that, that you're going to be charged more for um, interest rates, more for deposits. So think about that. I understand I've had a lot of people say to me, I use my debit card because I don't trust myself to use a credit card. I think I'll you know, go overboard with it. Um, you can
can't do something called a secured credit card where you only put so much money on it and no more. But just realize if you're paying everything with your debit card, you are not building uh, your credit score. So something to think about. I see a hand there. So I think it's still, you know, it's still being, it's still a debit card. It's not going to reflect um, on your credit report. So something to be aware of. We actually wrote a blog on our website called Good Credit. I want that. I just wrote it. And it's, it went out uh, a couple weeks ago. So take a look at our website and read it. Because um, again, it's you can be doing all the right things, but if it's not, if you're not paying in a way that shows up, it's not going to do you much good on your credit score. So uh, any. Questions left that we didn't touch on? Anybody got anything they want to ask? Okay, what I usually do at this point, um, once I have uh, gotten tired of talking, and uh, you all seem to run out of questions, is um, my deputy Dave and I, and he always wants me to remind you, we are also, yes, we are very cool, we are on social media. That is our QR code. So if you like to do Facebook, you can find us at CFPB Military. Uh, he would be very happy if you friended us. We are also on Twitter at CFPB Military. So you can find us that way. Um, if you have an issue that you want to email us about, you can email military at cfpb.gov. We're also going to hang out down front here for about 15 or 20 minutes. So if there are any of you who did not want to ask a, your question in front of the gang, you can stop by and see us um, before you leave. So with that, uh, let me just say, um, I wanted to come over here to Korea and see all of you because I wanted you to know that you're not forgotten in Washington, that we are there to serve you, and uh, we appreciate the fact that you're here halfway around the world serving your country. So thank you very much. Thank you.